I do know that a lot of you guys are from the nano community, so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some of the technical stuff that we um, have been doing this week. So the other thing that our team has been doing this week, aside from uh, getting everything going here, is uh, talking about um, what are the next steps um, on nano, specifically around the protocol. I, there's one term that we've used a lot, um, commercial grade. This week we went, got together and basically figured out what, what we want to define that as. It was, a, it was a term that we made up, but it, the intention was there. The intention was there needs to be a point that we need to get to before all of this stuff can be done you know, consistently, day in and day out, 24 hours a day, absolutely uh, I'm sure, assuredness. Um, and that's the technical things that we're working on. So what we came up with was two parts to it. Um, it is going to be um, connection authentication and our flow control mechanism in the network. Um, some people might call that anti-spam. Um, so those are the two things that we see as absolutely necessary uh, in order to get us what we need on the network and getting it flowing 24 hours a day. So I'll, I'll just briefly touch on these things and then it, um, you know, we're gonna do a bit of Q&A after if, if people have sp specific questions, so feel free to um, remember those. Um, <laughs> the uh, connection authentication um, is, is a modification of what we do right now. Right now, Nano authenticates things on an individual message basis and inside the code it, it gets it very complex when you uh, cannot be assured of the uh, stream of messages that are coming you coming to you from a specific node. So getting this connection authentication um, in place will alleviate a lot of the junk data that you can see on some of the statistic monitors that come out. Um, and, and inside the node, it actually makes things significantly easier for us um, to code. So a lot of it is an internal part on that one. Um, but it, it'll give us a lot of advantages. The second thing um, is, is the flow control mechanism. It, it's um, how, how does the network take in the data that people give it? Since Nano is open, um, anyone can connect to it as long as you have a device that can uh, connect to the internet. It, it presents a particularly hard problem um, compared to your average application. So uh, the network needs to be able to take in every, anything that anyone would ever give it and prioritize and make sure that it is processing things in a, in a timely manner and in a way that we want it to be done. So this is research that um, I had started at the beginning of the year um, and did several months on it. And it also builds off of um, things that people have suggested in the community. Basically, the time, time is a currency. Um, and prioritization in that aspect. So we are modeling that currently, um, and it, things are looking good on the models that we've um, designed so far. So the next part is, is our team is going to be implementing those things one by one, and then all the, the prerequisites that we need um, in order to get there. Um, so th those are the two main things um, as far as what we need in order to get to commercial grade. The view is that we see it as a human right for people to be able to participate in the global financial network. So there are almost two billion people in the world that don't have access to bank accounts. They simply do not have a bank account. And that cuts them off um, in a way that most of us here don't really experience um, in, in our day-to-day -day lives. So these are, the, these are the people that we can help with Nano, um, and, and also people that can't do it due to costs um, or due to, due to complexity of the system. All of these things, Nano is focused on the simplicity um, and uh, efficiency of making a truly global decentralized currency, because um, that's what we're building in the end. So the, the definition would be the network is resilient to any sort of traffic that we throw at the network. Um, and re it, so there are obviously unknowns in software that come by and we'll have to deal with those as they go um, through people doing code reviews um, and, and getting out the code in a simpler place. But the, the two major things um, that we think satisfy that goal, those goals is the connection authentication and, and the flow control. Um, and then everything beyond that, like the performance and the throughput, um, low latency is actually a very important thing, um, especially in finance. But those are, those are nice to have. Right now, what we have with Nano, as far as that performance aspect, is sufficient for where we are. Um, what, we, what we absolutely need in order to make that next step is um, the flow control uh, part of it.
the original design of that uh, algorithm was made and named, and named um, the, the time is a currency, I, I would myself put that on, under the umbrella of flow control. So I think flow control is just a generic term. And then the specific algorithms that we did um, is actually based off of that time as a currency uh, specification. So there are a couple things that we can't, can't implement in it. Um, that were in the specification the way Nano is currently. And one of those things that it requires is uh, timestamps inside of the transactions. Um, that, that would require a block change. However, as, as I was doing the research at the beginning of the year, it, it became apparent that in all but um, very, very exceptional cases, um, the, you don't need a perfect timestamp on these things because it's not, it's not a correctness issue. It's just a matter of prioritization. So, so largely it doesn't matter. Um, and then also we have, there, there were it, the research that I did designed a, a fallback mechanism for these things, which will process it slower, but it will absolutely make progress. And that's the most important thing. What we need to make sure is that the net, that network is always making progress. It never sits there idle effectively, um, especially if it's wasting bandwidth. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, the other one that we're doing, and you'll notice specifically that I wasn't mentioned in it, is um, the improvement to our consensus algorithm, which is still absolutely something that we um, are working on getting. But there are a couple of things that make it, um, for the nano network specifically around how nano works, it makes it not actually the highest priority at the moment, because you know the nano network has been operating for six years. The, uh, the rate at which the, there are issues in that area is very, very low. So there, the main thing that say that makes it so this doesn't affect the entire network with consensus um, issues is that Nano has the send and receive pairs. So if there's a consensus issue on the send portion of it, the receive portion will um, will absolutely not be able to be received. So the only way that um, the consensus failure affects the network is on the individual account that created the fault. So that that means that. It, it can't push that fault into other accounts on the network. Once, once it's failed on that one account, they're the only ones, the ones that generated these faulty transactions, they're the only ones that have to deal with it. Um, so be, because this is not something that can spread around, that's why I didn't include it in, in the actual commercial grade. It will be the next thing after, after it, um, since it's only a small modification, but uh, it, we don't include it in that current definition. I probably translator services for our original white paper. So we got that translated into, I think, 30 different languages. Um, so we, we had, a, I was paying everyone at the time in a very, very low price nano. Uh, so they did, I think, very well for translators. I think also the Rayblox logo you got made oh, right, with yes. nano. If anyone remembers that, if it's an OG Rayblox, then uh, that was made with nano. Yeah, that, I had never done a logo before. So that was um, very interesting. Just a little bit around, obviously, commercial grade is our end goal. However, Nano has been a live network for the last six years. And in the last six years, $42 billion have gone and been processed through Nano without a single fee. And that is really what we are here for. That is exactly why we are here, to build a global currency. Um, we're going into a lot more detail when Pim um, jumps on stage and we'll run through our work in Nigeria and what we've been working on so far. However, our main real communities in from the emerging world are in Indonesia, Brazil, Venezuela, and the Philippines especially. And that's why, as you'll see throughout the day, we will be explaining some of the products that we have been working on in the background and how we hope that they will provide a turnkey solution to every transaction possible, whether that's remittance, banking yourself, and, and all those other aspects. So we've got quite a lot to share with you along the day, which will explain that a little bit more. And one thing you often say is the, um, that we are focusing on the, the necessity, people that need. And that's the thing, is that what we really do with Nano, it's around necessity and not just a nice to have. Here in the Western world, we are incredibly privileged with our access to, to money, to the banking system, and to the banking infrastructure that we can so easily take for granted. And what we are really trying to focus on is those where Nano is a necessity. There is no other choice. And how can we help them be able to have the human right over their own money, which we all believe that everyone deserves. Yeah.